Hello, this is Dave Hammer, an amateur blacksmith with a little experience I'd like to share with you. This video is intended to benefit blacksmith and other metal workers. I will be building a propane burner block and using insulating fire brick, sometimes referred to as soft fire brick, to make various sizes and shapes of forges. Please read these notices and take them seriously. This is the burner block we're going to be building. Basically two burners on a base. This illustration shows the burners and the parts needed to build a manifold. All parts are standard quarter inch pipe fittings with the exception of the quick connect. The burners on each side were made following the instructions in my propane burner video. The ball valve is used as a shutoff valve so if you want to you can run only one burner. The T provides the port to the propane line. This is a hose assembly that goes from the propane tank to the uh, forge. Learn to build this or put this together and what parts to use on the burner video. First we need to cut two four inch pieces of two inch schedule 40 pipe and, we, and make a base plate. A base plate can be as simple as a piece of um, plate steel, four inches wide and about 14 inches long. What I had was like six inches wide, so instead of uh, absorbing that all that weight, I just cut it. First thing we do with the pipe that the burners are going to be uh, bolted into is mark them so we know where to drill the holes for the for threading for the bolts that are going to hold in the burners. I just divide, use a sharpie and divide these uh, two pieces of pipe into, into three sections. I just hand draw this. This does not have to be precise. There's two sets of three holes, one near the bottom, one near the top. The one near the bottom should be about an inch from the end. The top can be within a half an inch or so. Next we're going to center punch all those, all those marks. This is particularly important to do when you're drilling pipe. Over to the drill press in a V-block. Gloves on so you don't tear up your hands. You can use a vise if you want on this. I use uh, quarter inch bolts, quarter twenty. So um, when we tap, the requirement here for a drill bit is a number seven. If you if you don't have a, a that size drill bit or a tap set, you can look for this kind of kit. Uh, look for quarter twenty NC and you'll have the tap and you'll have the proper size drill bit. I just use the um, post vise when I tap. In this um, <clears throat> demonstration I'm using that little tap holder. If you have a variable speed reversible drill with enough power you can actually just put this tap in it and and go through this. You have to be careful though because it's easy to break the these tabs. A little lubricant. I like this brand. I'm always getting things on my fingers. And my clothes, which is evident here. Next I assemble the manifold using a paste sealant. I prefer paste over tape. Keep the paste away from the end in a couple threads. I have used tape. I just have better luck with um, this paste, especially this particular brand. It's pricey, but it, to me it's worth it. I don't have to, in general, don't have to worry about leaks. You still need to check for leaks. 
entire assembly entire manifold here all the way across Keep some paper towel or a rag handy. If you have it all together, get it aligned as best you can. Those pipes have to be in line. We do it again after we put on the burner tubes. What am I going to do next? No, nope. yep, no. Nope. Actually, what I need to do next is measure the distance between those. Um, between those two tips. I need to know that distance for something coming up shortly. So I just measure it and mark it on the paper. Six and a quarter inches. Forgot to put in the quick connect, so I'll do it now. Wipe off the extra paste. We'll put the burner tubes on now. You see me struggle a little bit getting these on, and that's the way I like it. It should be, they shouldn't be sloppy. You want them tight so that, so that uh, MIG tip points straight down the uh, burner pipe. Tighten it up with the Allen wrench. Now fiddle with it till you get it flat. There we go. There, the distance between those MIG tips determines how far apart those. Uh, uh, that, that two inch pipe needs to be welded onto the plate. Set that up. Put a center line on the burner plate. This is not rocket science, obviously. Find the center, then mark where the MIG tips were and mark around the pipe so we know where to put it when we go over to the welder. I use the arc welder. It's what I learned to weld with first. Just tack these on first. That burner plate should be at least quarter inch or five sixteenths inch steel. You don't, when you're wel welding this on, you don't want this to warp. If you're using other forms of welding, you can maybe use a little lighter material. Tack that second one. And then weld all the way around on both of them. I blow the holes out through the bottom of the plate using a heavier rod and cranking my arc welder way up. It'll blow through if you hold it, hold it in one place while you're welding in there. And then just follow around the edge of the pipe. Blows the hole out neat, you can see there. Does leave slag on the bottom though. You want to get rid of that? Get a little angle grinder. That little table I took off there was one of the best ideas I had for a shop. I've used this um, vise for, well, so I think I built it in 1970, the, the, um, the stand. And making that little table for it gives me a, a small welding table that isn't in the way normally. I store it under the, in the uh, frame. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean those threads out. There's another table I use with my post vise. This is actually as handy or more handy 
use a heavy plate top for that. I think that one's three seven inch plate. To clean these out, I just chuck up the um, the tap and use a variable speed reversible drill. Be sure you orient those um, threaded holes so that you can do that. Because if you don't, then you're going to end up using something else. Put in the bolts, quarter inch bolts, one and a quarter inches long. Just just start them. If you screw them in too far, you won't be able to get the pipe, the uh, burners down there. So next, we install the burners. You're going to see me mark this because I want the, these uh, flares to stick down about an inch and a half below the bottom of the base. The soft fire brick are two and a half inches thick and so when this is setting on top the uh, bottom of the flare is um, about an inch out of the burn chamber. <clears throat> This is important. Take a little bit of thermal blanket and make strips and seal in around the burners. We don't want these to become chimneys. So we seal them up. We're going to build a top for our forge. This, this first one, that's the only one I'm going to show you being built, is, is a large one. It's 10 brick. <clears throat> this is a very large top. I have a piece of um, heavy sheet metal there that has a bend in it. Um, and I use that. You can use a 2x2 uh, two two angle iron, eighth of an inch thick. It will work fine. Center that. Mark where the bricks are. Draw a line. Then you mark from from the inside down one and a quarter inches. That should be the same as the center of the brick. And over one quarter toward the center. We're going to be drawing holes for threaded rod there. First drill a three sixteenths hole or three sixteenths or around that size. <clears throat> the size is not critical here, just a small hole, and then use a half inch drill bit to make the hole larger. That bend is uh, done on a little curve, so um, we need to camfer these edges, knock the edges off so that um, metal can sit against sits directly against the brick both on the top and on the side and you'll have to do the same for angle iron it's just not quite as pronounced as for this center those um, pieces and mark the brick you should, that, that should give you a half inch hole mark right at the edge of the brick in the center we're going to use threaded rod to um, hold this assembly together, this top. So we're going to want to groove. We just take our brick one at a time. And I just use a threaded rod to, um, to make that groove. I'm doing it over here. I got a cardboard box down there, so when I make a mess, it uh, I can either it either goes into the cardboard box or or I um, brush it into it. I just keep working this back and forth until that whole rod is level with the side of the brick. That's our slot. I use those holes or those marks on that one side on the outside to determine where I need to make that groove. It should be pretty much dead center. Next, we install, install this hardware to make this assembly. 
again this is a very large top the one I'm going to be using later uh, is there's going to be one that only has six blocks this one has ten I always put the burner block assembly in the center bricks I would seldom use a top this size the, the, the one that I use most is uh, one with six bricks and it's easier to handle anyway and and um, it should make a freeform forge large enough to do pretty much what you need now this would make a good top for making a warming chamber you know or a heat treat oven or or whatever if you had something big or a pizza oven <laughs> tighten that up just a little bit you don't want to be crushing that you you don't want to be making it too tight you'll crush those brick these brick are fairly fragile we're going to drill holes in that so we can in the center brick so we set the um, burner block down on top of that and the burners heat down so first you draw a center line on those center bricks didn't believe my mark since my MIG tips were six and a half inches or six and a quarter inches apart I'll mark each of these out from the center three and an eighth And to drill a nice clean hole, I just use a blade, a wood blade bit. Now this is going to be hard on your wood blade, on your blade bit. You just have to accept that. <clears throat> I just go down to the metal. I can feel it when it stops going. I'm not pushing hard. You're going easy. We don't drill all the way through from one side. We would probably mess up the, the brick on the other side if we did that the same as the same process as if you're drilling through a block of wood you drill far enough through so you can see the the pilot hole tip it up and drill back through so you have a complete hole. Do this very carefully because that's pretty thin there. You don't push hardly at all. Now, I used a one and a half inch blade. That's the largest one I have. It's not quite large enough for for um, my for my burner block for my flare. So. I use a red tail file for two purposes. One to make the whole hole a little larger, and the second purpose is to is to uh, make that the bottom side cone it a little bit, flare that, <clears throat> so so that it flares just a little bit also. Just work that. You'll be try your burner block. You know, once or twice on there to see if um, to see how far you need to file it. Shouldn't have to go far. The metal that goes over the over the top of the brick that that's always on top. You never have metal that's down in the burn chamber, so that always sits up. That's why. That's why you should only use a two inch um, angle iron. Clean this mess up a little bit. Try the burner block. Make sure it goes in easy. You don't want to have to be forcing it. You don't. You don't want to be creating dust. We're not going to do it in this um, in this video, but if you want, you could put the slurry on that I use in the in the lining of Super C Forge. It would uh, make these bricks stronger, and it would uh, make the uh, burn more efficient, be more reflection of heat. Again, this would be a very large forge. You 
might have an application for it. <clears throat> if you want, if you needed to work on a like a long piece of pipe or something, and you wanted to heat a long section, you generally can't work a long section though. So that's why a small forge is generally a, uh, appropriate. Always use soft brick for your floor. Um, if if you need a hard brick, if you need a hard surface, put something over soft brick. At least that's what I do. Don't ever assume that you can build something like this, put something like this together and just do it on a metal surface. <clears throat> you'll heat that metal surface and that's all, where all your heat's going to go and you'll, or most of it, and you'll never achieve any kind of um, forging temperature for, uh, on your material. Your burners will be no more than little blow torches for effectively, functionally. So we got our big top, put it on, there we go. Pizza oven. There definitely would be application for this size, but I wouldn't have too much of it. So, so actually I put together a smaller one also. Put the burner block in, block the ends, uh, whatever is appropriate. This is a little more realistic um, size, useful size for me. The top is easier to handle and easier to store. I don't, I don't put these uh, forges together and leave them. I just put them together when I need them. I don't take the top apart, but I take everything else apart and just store it. I have some bins I put these blocks in. It's a little easier to handle. Put our, put our burner block unit in there. We got a forge. If you're going to do welding, you need to put some kind of plate. If you're going to attempt to do welding, um, that's a big area to, to heat to welding heat, but I'm not saying you could or couldn't. I haven't tried it, but you you put something on that floor. It might be it might be a thin hard brick or it might be a piece of ceramic shelf or whatever. You don't want to do um, forge welding directly on this brick. The, the flux will eat this brick. We're going to build this up a little bit make it two and a half inches taller. Think about how you're constructing these and so that you have stability. You'll see a, a good example here and some not so good examples or they work but the way that I had done it and on our a little bit later on the projects. Here I have a, a forge that's let's see four and a half five seven inches high in the burn chamber and nine uh, nine inches wide. That's a fairly good sized forge. If I want to do long stuff I just leave the back end open a little bit. Stick the burner assembly in there. If you wanted to make something like a heating chamber where you had a, a good control over the heat, um, this is a, a forge that I have blocks on top of the top and then I put the burner on top of them and the only heat that goes down in there is what makes it through the, the uh, small holes in the top. Some projects I've done in these uh, kind of forges. So, so I made a muffler cone for my nasal. Um, that's a four inch piece of pipe about eight inches long that I forged into a cone. See a little bit of my process. There's actually a video up on this. I've made vessels. Um, this is rusted plate that's 5 sixteenths in, in uh, thickness and I'll cut an unusual shape and, and um, uh, up to 12 by 12 and some of them are not that big but uh, some, un some unusual shape and heat it up in a forge like this. That's an old burner um, assembly that I had. A friend of mine has that now. 
use a tongs to move these brick around. You could do it with gloved hands, but I don't recommend that. This is going to have dragon breath, just like any any um, propane forge. You can see how hot I got that. The way I make these vessels is I have this huge bearing race, and I just use the ram on a on a huge um, press that I made. I have other tooling that I clamp on that for other jobs, but depending on the shape and where it's where that ring is sitting, you'll get uh, a nice shape. I make cowboy hats. These are large ones. This was a nine-inch plate disc. All in all, these are handy. It's a sweet solution to make a variable sized forge. Thanks for watching.